together growing in faith, changing communities. Together growing in faith, changing communities. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Today, dear friends, I'd like us to reflect on the Gospel of John chapter 19 from verses 25 to verse 13. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleopas and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scriptures might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. And there was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a spring of hyssop and put it on his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. It's a beautiful reading. Let's go through this. The first thing that Jesus is on the cross. And standing at the foot of the cross are some women. And amongst those women is his mother but there's also John the Beloved. At least those are mentioned. Mary, the mother of Jesus, the wife of Cleopas, Mary of Magdala, and we also find out that John the Beloved is there. It's quite an important thing. They stood by Jesus. They stood by him when he needed them the most. But then you see some, some dynamics in this story. Have you noticed that Jesus does not speak to Mary Magdalene? He has no message that is recorded to have been given to Mary Magdalene. There's no message that has been recorded that has been given to Mary, the wife of Cleopas, but to two people, not even to Peter. It is his mother. Mom, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. And so, in a very interesting way, John takes over and he becomes the son that Mary had lost in Jesus. And Mary becomes the mother that Jesus had lost. And that mother is now given to John. Coming from a culture where it is valued and absolutely important to record, to listen with attentiveness the words that are said by anyone who is dying. Because those words are very in informative and somehow they give us direction what to do from now on. And the author makes this indicative statement, and John took Mary into his home from then on. So the first thing that one needs to realize, the possibility that Joseph possibly was dead by then. So Mary goes through the death of her son alone and go to Luke chapter 2, when Joseph and Mary takes Jesus and Simeon says, this child is destined for the fall and the rise of many in Israel. Then he looks into Mary and he says to her, your heart will also be pierced by the sword. So Joseph is possibly dead by now. And Mary has to go through this alone. Hence, Jesus gives Mary John 
as a companion. And that's what I probably want us to look into. Mental health is a big thing. And one of the worst things that has to do with mental health is to suffer alone. Nobody else knows that you are depressed. Nobody else knows that you are anxious. Nobody else knows that you live with this absolutely paralyzing fear. Nobody knows this. Because we, we put in a facade. We don't want people to know. We don't allow people into our space. We hide it even from our children. We hide it from our spouses. We hide it from our family. We hide it from our colleagues. There's a stigma associated with it. And we've seen this with suicide. And if you were to analyze and do a study on this. Most of the people, particularly the public figures, who had committed suicide, go and start analyzing what they posted on social media weeks or months before they committed suicide. There are all these indications. You know, one of the greatest men that I've come to know, appreciate and love, uh, is Bishop Barry Wood. Bishop Barry Wood was very good at that. He was very good at reading the messages and trying to decode them and, and see what's going on. And so he will read these messages on, on social media uh, from some of us, and the next thing you, you will hear Bishop Barry calling you and just checking on you. How are you? Are you okay? Are you doing well? Invite you over. Uh, and, and, and either for, for dinner or for lunch or, or in his office or whatever. And he says, are you okay? Are you, are you, are you well? But I also saw this also in Archbishop Abel Gabuza. He was able to just see beyond what you were saying. And he was never afraid to pick up the phone. He was never afraid to drive to you and say, are you okay? I just wanted to find out if you're okay. Do you have people like that? People who looked at who look into you and say, well, let's go for coffee. Let's go for a walk. Let's go for drinks. It's not about coffee. It's not about a walk. It's not about drinks. They can see that you know, okay. And so they just want you to know that if you want to talk, I'm here. If you ever, ever want to talk, I'm here. So that's the first thing that I pick up and I appreciate on the relationship that Jesus has built with, with Mary as well as with John. Then he offers his mother this lifeline, as it were. Then there's something that also happens. He cries out and he says, I'm thirsty. And one of the soldiers allows Jesus to drink from the common wine and that says to me, not no one is intrinsically evil. Yes, the very same people who were willing to kill him, but they were also willing to be human to him somehow. To give him something to drink. And why am I pointing of this? In the Gospel of Matthew 25, when I was lonely, when I was sick, when I was in hospital, when I was thirsty, Lord, but where did we see all this? In so far as you did it to the least of my brothers and sisters, you did it to me. I may disagree with you in many ways, but that does not give me permission to disrespect you. I may not like you, but it does not give me permission to be nasty to you. We can disagree and I can still be civil. We can disagree and I can still respect you for who you are. And that, I think, is one of the most powerful lessons that most leaders need to learn. And there's something that I also find absolutely interesting. In the Gospel of John, Jesus gives his spirit. It's not taken away. He hands it over. And he says this. 
I can let hand over my life. I will give my life. He has this freedom. And I think we need that attitude. That we don't become victims of our past. We don't become victims of our circumstances. We don't become victims of malicious people. No. We are not victims. We are survivors. May the Virgin Mother of God continue to be with us, to protect, to bless, and to guide us. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.